Hey YouTube, I just wanted to put a quick video together talking about silver and the relationships of pe those around you uh, and discussions of silver and how it's received um, and of course show off some of the uh, shiny metal but <clears throat> before I do that I really wanted to take a moment to uh, give you a very sincere thank you for taking the time to watch my videos uh, for subscribing We've had some really good dialogue on some of my videos. It's very encouraging. Um, you know, it doesn't. We, we've had people that have literally bought their first ounce and they've weighed in uh, right up to people with two or three thousand ounces. So a really uh, wide range there, and it's it's all appreciated. I know that if you're new to silver, some of the first guys that you're going to encounter on YouTube are guys like Chris Duane, who uh, does a better job articulating the. Silver Story better than anybody uh, with really strong visuals. Uh, guys like David Morgan and Brother John F. <clears throat> the problem is you can't really relate to these guys. I mean, they'll tell the Silver Story, but it's hard to say that you can be in the same position as them. I feel like, uh, you know, my, my, my channel is, is really for people in a similar situation to me. Um, somebody that's you know, middle income or even maybe a little bit lower income, trying to find creative ways to add silver to their stack, to save for the future. You know, I'll never be a rich guy. Um, I've kind of given up on that long, long ago. Um, at my job, even if I get promotions, the, the rage, raises are, are so marginal now. My, my buying power goes down every single year. So it's a struggle, and I, and I know that a lot of you can relate. And so, again, I appreciate it. It's, it's almost like... Uh, when you go to the gym for the first time and you're, you're the guy wearing the uh, white t-shirt and you're, you know, with your pasty white skin and, you know, little string bean arms and you look over at the bench press and there's guys benching 250 and it's really hard to relate to those guys. You never know you'll never be there. Um, so, I, again, thank you. We've got some really good discussions. The uh, my, my 2013 goal setting video, quite a few of you have uh, weighed in on your goals. And I'll update that spreadsheet every month, post a video. It'll, it'll be a really good discussion, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. So on to the video. <clears throat> Stop me if you've heard this before. Silver is probably the most passionate I've ever felt about an investment in my life. I, I feel like it's a winning investment on so many levels. You have the industrial play where with silver's unique properties, with technologies becoming more and more complex and basically there's no substitute for the silver, the, the, the floor is always going to be there. But you also have the money side of it. With government and their out of control spending, the weakening of the dollar, I, I feel like literally I'm in on the ground floor here. And I realize that the ground floor was really five bucks an ounce, but regardless, for all intents and purposes, I took my son to see The Hobbit the other day and I spent the same amount of money to go to a movie, buy popcorn and soda, as I did buying this Lunar Series snake. I mean, my God, this will be with me forever. You know, the Hobbit money is already gone. I, I just feel like it's such a strong value. You know, Lance Hoa had a uh, had a video how he brought a bunch of cans back and was able to buy a uh, Tukalau 2013 Year of the Snake with a bunch of returned empties. I mean, my God, it's it's so cheap. And I know that this is a winning investment. And I know that you feel the same way. So you share this passion and you want to basically tell your friends, you want to tell your family, you want to bring them along for the ride. But there's a couple reasons why you really shouldn't do that and we'll kind of get into that. And uh, I'm curious on, on what some of your, uh, what some of your, of your experiences are with, with trying to convert people to uh, looking at silver as an investment. You know, it goes to show you how small the silver market is. Um, and I know there's a lot of examples of this, but uh, just to set an example, there was a video that I watched when I first started watching silver videos. It, it was from a guy named Guseva, G-U-S-E-V-A-1, and his video was entitled Great Australian Silver and Gold Collection. And he shows you the most beautiful Perth Mint collection I think I've seen on YouTube. It's just great. 37,000 views. There's a video of a guy popping a big zit on his back. 2.6 million views. If that isn't just a microcosm of our society, then I, I don't know what is. You know, people are more involved in little tedious, um, meaningless stuff than saving for their retirement, saving for their future, accumulating wealth. 
Well, that's fine. Let them sleep at, let them sleep at the wheel and watch zip popping videos while we uh, have our little community where we you know have like-minded passionate people with silver and uh, exchange ideas. This is a uh, this is a roll of koalas that I bought. I love the koalas. Um, my goal is to buy one roll a year. So basically when the new when the new um, <clears throat> When the new design comes out every year, I'll probably buy a roll. So the reason that you sh you got to be careful talking to people about silver is it's a lot of concentrated wealth in a small area. If your if your investment strategy was to keep a suitcase of cash in the house, would you go around telling all of your friends and family about how you keep a suitcase of cash in the house and that that's the way to go? Of course not. You know you'd be literally just inviting them to come in and try to find it. Really, I mean, the same principle applies here. You know, the, if you will go around telling everybody that you're accumulating large amounts of silver, they're they're gonna tr come try to find it. One of the one of the safeguards that I have in, in my home is I have a dummy safe in my room out in plain sight. It's a little lockbox. Um, put a couple of little, um, you know, those rip off gold buffalo coins you see on TV at night that have like point zero zero five milligrams of gold. They're ten dollars a piece. Put a couple of those in there. Put some wheat pennies, put some nickels in there, you know, maybe even a clad bar. Maybe even, you know, you can buy those clad bars really cheap. You put something in there, if somebody breaks into your home, they think they hit the jackpot, they're out the door, and they basically get nothing. I mean, that's one of the, the strategies that I use to secure my, uh, my wealth. The other thing I wanted, wanted to um, discuss is you, you discuss silver with, with your friends and family, and they look at you like you're out of your mind. You know, maybe your parents will give you that condescending look like they gave you when you were 13 years old and you're trying to put your X-Men comic book collection together or you were buying your, you know, your action figures or, or whatever it was. They're really dismissive of this, like it's just yet another incarnation of the hobbies that you used to enjoy when you were little. Or maybe you collect something as, a, as an adult that they might frown upon. People don't get it. I've had some really good conversations with people at work, people that are really high level intellectually, yet they've been so conditioned to believe that the stock market's the way to go, they will resist and they will fight. And you know, there's that part of you that want to, wants to win the debate and wants to be right and wants to be the first guy out there. But you know what? It's not worth it. They're not going to get it. The best thing that you can do is channel your enthusiasm in places like YouTube or Kitco forums, or there's a, there's a bunch of other places on the internet where at, you know you'll be sharing your ideas and your in your goals with like-minded people. That's one of the great things about YouTube. Um, I, I I can share it with my son. You know, my son is really into silver, but like my wife, she could you know she could really care less. I mean, she basically defers to me on all the financial stuff, so she lets me take care of it. Is there a little bit of resistance when every month I'm trying to make these large bullion purchases? Absolutely. But it's something that we can't, we discuss and we are pretty much on the same page. But, you know, there are some sacrifices that are made there. Um, also, understand that a lot of precious metals enthusiasts are sometimes looked at in a poor light. They're looked at as conspiracy theorists. You know, there's a wide spectrum of, of silver investors. It, go, it starts with, uh, you know, I like it, it's pretty and shiny, and it goes all the way to we're going to have a Mad Max scenario where I need to use a Franklin half to buy a chicken to feed my family. I mean, it, it's, it's literally a wide range. And you know what? Who's to say who's right and who's wrong? I have no idea. All I know is that silver will be a great complement to my 401k plan, my other retirement investing, my, my, four, my uh, home equity loan, my home equity rather. And, you know, it's just a big part of it. But, <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm out of things to say there. What, what I'd like to hear from you guys is you try to convert somebody, friends, family, what the reaction is. Do they look at you like you have four eyes? Um, you know, it's cool to be the, the fun uncle that, that gives the kids a, uh, an American Silver Eagle for their birthday and everything else. But are they really getting it? You know, are, are your friends getting it? My reaction, the reaction I've gotten mostly has been pretty negative, so I've pretty much given it up. YouTube will be my, um, my outlet, if you will. So, okay guys, well thank you very much for watching. Talk to you later.